What we want to do today at this time is to to get out, and some of you got the envelopes, you can just use a regular church envelope, or if you want to just donate towards this. We've got some final things to conclude when I get there. And I'm just gonna just ask you just to bring it up and just put it on the altar right here, um, right now. So if you want, just make any checks payable to New Beginnings Church and we'll make sure we get it at this time. So we pray today that you will bless this offering that we're going to give to those who are less fortunate than we are. And so God, we pray for your blessings upon it now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody say, Amen. 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 Praise God. So turn your Bibles with me. We're going to continue... And this is the last installment, for, for now at least, in the book of Ephesians. And so the series, of course, is called, Ephe is called the Ephesians series, Finding Your True Identity in Christ. And I thought it would be a good idea to, to actually go back again, um, Frankie. We're going to actually stand to your feet. And in this time when we have been facing concerted attacks and concerted issues. When that happened in the times of the Israelites, they would make decrees and declarations. And so on, where's uh, Pastor, where's uh, the Pastor? Steve Smith, come out and give, give, give me that microphone there and lead us in this decree and de declaration. And I want you to say, remember last time, we don't really care about saying it in harmony. We wanted to say, and don't say it timidly, when you are under attack, you must speak with boldness, decrees. This is not just spiritual, this is not just physical and medical. These are spiritual attacks. Yeah. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. And so when we are speaking, speak it with boldness. Yeah. Hold the hand of your spouse and decree and declare that healing and wholeness will be our portion in Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. Say it with it, say it together. Spiritual healing. I decree, according to Exodus 15:26, that healing is my portion through Christ's suffering, death, and resurrection. I declare that in 2021, I will walk in God's healing from all spiritual sickness, spiritual dryness, spiritual lukewarmness, and spiritual malnutrition in the name of Jesus. Next slide. I decree, according to Isaiah 53, 5, that Jesus was wounded for my transgressions. He was crushed for my iniquities. And with his stripes, I am healed. I declare that I will walk in God's healing power. Jesus Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Therefore, I forbid any sickness or disease to come upon my body. Every disease and every virus that touches my body dies instantly in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I decree upon Psalms 147.3 that Jesus heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. I declare that in 2021, I will walk in God's emotional healing and well-being from broken relationships, past traumas, heartache, divorce, drug addictions, loss, and other areas of past traumatic experiences in the name of Jesus. I bind anxiety disorders, obsessive compulsive disorders, and phobias, depression, bipolar disorder, PTSD, psychotic disorders, including schizophrenia and other mood disorders from my life and the lives of my family through the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I decree, according to 3 John 2, that I am restored to health and my wounds are healed I declare that I will walk in physical, emotional, social, spiritual, and intellectual health in 2021 in the name of 
Jesus. Hallelujah. I declare that I will not relapse, regress, slip, or backslide, but I will be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord Jesus' name. I declare that I will maintain complete physical, spiritual, emotional health and well-being through 2021 and beyond. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I forbid my body to be deceived in any way. My body will not be touched by any virus or disease. Every cell of my body will support life and health in Jesus' name. I decree according to James 1, 4, that I will be perfect and complete, lacking nothing in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we declare that you keep us healthy, wealthy, and wise all the days of our lives. We are healed mentally, spiritually, physically, and emotionally to wholeness. We decree that we are going from glory to glory, strength to strength, and faith to faith in Jesus' name. We declare divine alignment and harmony in all aspects of our lives, including spiritual, physical, emotional, financial, and relational. We declare that the law of the divine completeness is being manifested in every area of our lives. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you have made everything beautiful and have planted eternity in my heart. Amen. Is that right? Amen. 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 All right. Come on, put your hands together. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So walking in healing and wholeness, we want to talk today about finding our true identity in Christ. Now, you will remember, those who have been paying attention, that in the book of Ephesians, the letter to the Ephesians, and incidentally, turn your Bibles to it. Let's be like the... The uh, Bereans. Bereans who are just not just listening, but you're also checking, checking to make sure what Pastor is saying is right. Amen? Amen. Right. Um, there are three things that we can see throughout the, this entire epistle. If you like, there are three kind of um, overarching themes. The first one is, if you can imagine these metaphors of, first of all, we are seated. Yes. And so we are, we are seated, we are walking, and we are standing. Amen. First time Paul talks about that we are seated in heavenly places. And so the posture is one of understanding your place in Christ. Amen. And that, 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 that you are seated in heavenly places, also you are beside Jesus Christ. And you must know that you are fortified. How many of you know that I can be bold because I'm beside Jesus Christ? Amen. I remember when I was in school, my brother was a, I had a big brother who was a karate expert, even at school, and he was known to be very ferocious. I was little and skinny, but how many of you knew that I was the baddest guy in town? <laughs> and anybody mess with me, <laughs> she got my big brother to deal with. But we need to understand that when we align ourselves with Jesus, no weapons formed against you can prosper. You are not just strong because of your, your experience in the church and your knowledge of the word. You are strong because of who Jesus is. Hallelujah. And what Jesus has done. And my only qualification is that I'm in Christ. So the Bible talks about that we are, number one, we are seated in Christ. And we are secure in Christ. And the word in Christos is repeated repeated over and over and over again because Paul wanted the Greeks and the Jews to recognize that it wasn't in the law, it wasn't in Greek philosophy, it wasn't in Roman rule, in Roman politics, but that we were seated in Christ. After establishing our position in Christ, he then says that we have to walk it out. And we talked about for some time walking it out. Walking it out in humility. Walking it out in, in uniqueness. Walking it out in love. Walking it out in light. And walking it out in wisdom. And walking it out 
in the spirit. Amen. Amen. So, so, so not only are we to imbibe and to embody this understanding of God's new people, yeah. but it must be something that we live out. Yeah. You can't just be it, but you must walk it, and you must live it, and you must demonstrate it. Yeah. Now the second part, the third part of this rather, is that we are not just seated, we are not just walking, but we are standing in Christ. And I want to speak to you today about taking a stand. Yes. Amen. Amen. It's time to take a stand. And this idea of taking a stand is throughout all epistles, right throughout many epistles. We have to take a stand. What Paul was saying was that this new humanity, this new creation, the new people of God, that God has brought about will face concerted attacks. You will be attacked. This new identity, it won't be just attacked from below in terms of the different conflicts and cultures and traditions, but they are also going to be a more, more importantly, they're going to be spiritual attacks. And one of the things that we don't understand today, more than we should, much as we should, is that we are facing a spiritual attack. Yeah. Even with this coronavirus, and, and, and not just the virus, but what comes with it. Yes. How it's manipulated, it's spiritual. Yes. Yes. And we mustn't just deal with the symptoms. We have to deal with the forces and the powers behind the attack. How many of you know that when you deal with the symptoms, the devil can move the symptoms around? Right, right. When you begin to recognize the source of the, and the root yeah. of this nefarious powers, that we can be more than conquerors. Yeah. Yeah. And Paul talks about now, stand for what God has done. Thank you. Yes. Amen. Take a stand. Yes. Yes. Amen. God has done this. Yep. God has put us in Christ. And now stand firm in it. Yes. Amen. There's going to become winds and there's going to be turmoil. But the idea of standing firm, Paul says to the Galatians, stand firm in the liberty that God has made for you. Stand firm in your faith. And when the wind and, and all of this kind of nervousness comes about, we must stand firm, firm in Christ. Somebody say, take a stand. Take a stand. And he talks about in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the moment we must be steadfast and unmovable. We have not seen believers. Yeah. Let me tell you something about the devil, how the devil is cunning. And we must not be of, um, ignorant of his device. First of all, you close down the churches. Right. That no matter what, we online everything else. But most of the time, I've never seen so many people who have been good church going folks saying, I've never been to church in months. Right. Even in a year. Yeah. And many of them haven't been online. Right. First of all, you remove them wow. from the place of community. Right. Yep. And then this second wave is now you attack them individually. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. That's right. One by one. That's right. Yep. And you must be aware that first of all, many of us don't even know, um, we, didn't, we hardly knew people who were sick. Or we hardly knew people who were right. or being impacted by right. it. Whatever right. your politics and what but, but what we can say now is that so many people are facing, people are calling me with phobias and fears and, and oh, why there's now an individual now you've scattered the flock. Right. Now you must pick them off individually one by one. That's the plan. That's his plan. Yeah. Come on, preach, preach And I'm saying to you, you must stand. Stand. Firm because he wants to push you off right. your pedestal. Come on. Standing firm in what Jesus has done. Yes. My yes. God, well, what Jesus has done for me, I'm going to stand in it. Yes. I'm going to maintain who I am in Christ. Yes. Now, there are three ways in which we can stand firm. Firstly, we have to know upon whom and upon what we are standing. Yes. Now, many of you may be standing on other grounds and foundations. But I'm from this old school that says on, you don't know this song. On Christ. Don't worry, John, I know you don't know this song. Really, I know you don't 
I know it, but just bear with me. I'm going to give some of the older folks who can say, I know the song. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. How many of you can shout an amen for that? Hallelujah. I'm standing on Christ. So first of all, know who you st what you stand upon. Yes. Know the foundation. So one, know what you are standing on and know whom you are standing on. First of all, you are standing on the promises of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Stand, I want you to know that God is faithful to his promises. Yes. And in this time that we are living in, we must stand upon God's promises. What are these promises? It's promises that he will be your strength. And the Bible says that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can beat this. I can stand because it is Christ who strengthens me. We must stand because we must stand on the promises that God will, Christ will never leave us. Be strong and be courageous. Do not fear or be, uh, or be afraid of them, for it is the Lord who goes before you. Yes. Deuteronomy 31. Stand upon the promises of God that says, I will prosper you. Hallelujah to God. Yes. For I know the plans that you have for me, and his plans to do good and to prosper me. Know all of the promises of God. Know that God hears your prayers. Know that God is fighting for you. Know that you are more than a conqueror. Amen. There are some Amen. things you must not just know because your mother told you or because you read it on the internet, but you know it experientially. You know it because you've been through it. You know it because the devil has attacked you and tried to give you a nervous breakdown, but you've managed to stand upon the word of God. I don't know because I'm just read about it. How many of you know because you've been through something? You've been through something and you came out on the other side giving God praise and thanks. And when I stand, I'm standing not because of something that somebody told me, but because of something I know. I know Jesus is Lord. I know I'm saved by the blood. I know I'm washed by the blood. I know the word of God is true. I know it's, it's, it's more powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. There's something you've just got to know. Right. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Stand upon the knowledge that you have because in the midst of storm or on storm it's going to test your knowledge yes, it is. do you know it for true right. are you just here as a cultural Christian coming to church but when the winds of life begins to blow and the turmoil of tri tribulations and, and trials come your way all of a sudden your faith is wavering but I'm here to say in this time of, of confusion stand upon what you know yes, yes. yes and some of it is what your mother told you what your father told you what your pastor told you and what you've been through for yourself stand upon what you know hallelujah yes. and stand upon Christ the solid rock yes. and so as we move further the, the, the first thing is that we have to stand upon the promises of God yes, yes. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. God is faithful. Yes. God is faithful. Secondly, we have to know against whom we are standing. And the Bible says in Ephesians chapter, look at it, 6 and verse 12. Many of us think that the, the devil is a fairy tale. But in these past couple of days and past couple of years, you realize there's more than a fairy tale. We must stand because, this is what the apostle says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and power. And in verse 10 it says, finally my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might Put on the whole arm of God. Why? Put on the whole arm of God that we may be able to stand against your mother, your brother, your workmate. The schemes of the devil. Who said the schemes? Good. That's right. mm -hmm. To be able to stand the word against the wiles. That's an old English term. Wiles of the devil. The Greek word is methodos. 
Yeah. It means you must understand that the devil devises special schemes right, right, right. tailor-made for you. Yeah. He doesn't have a blanket approach. He studied you. He knows your weakness. He knows what ticks you off. He knows what makes you doubt. And the Bible says here the word methodos, wiles, means the schemes of the devil. And so you must understand this. And let me tell you this, that when Paul was writing this to the Ephesians, they were not oblivious. They were not secularists like we are today. They fully understand that there were principalities and powers and rulers of darkness. We, we, we read about, we talked about the goddess Artemis or Diana. We talked about how there were spiritual powers and mediums and, and the sons of Sepha doing all kinds of magic. They were familiar with the, uh, the cosmology of demonology. And there were all kinds of demonic power, powers that Paul was teaching them to contend with. And it's just like us today. They are, there are spiritual wickedness yes. in the atmosphere. Yes. I'm surprised how Christians are so caught up in the brown game. So caught up into identity politics. So caught up into the, the nefarious things going on with my brother. Who is against this? Who is it? I'm, I, I, I'm, I, I'm so, but what we must recognize that there is a, a hair game going on. That's a hair game. That's a hair game. That they were going to be Greeks yeah. and proselytes and Jews, and there were all kinds of cultures working on the ground. He knew that there were going to be cultural dynamics and confusion as Jews and Gentiles tried to live out the people of God. But he knew most of all that if that wasn't the most dangerous opponent. The most dangerous opponent was because when the devil saw what God has given birth to in the world, right. that the kingdom of God has come up into the world, when the devil saw that the kingdom of this world, what that he boasts about, saying to Jesus, all of these kingdoms are mine. If you bow down and worship me, yeah. I will give them to you. He decreed and declared that the kingdom of the world, the Bible says in Luke 10 and 19, that behold, I saw Satan like lightning fall down to the earth. The earth is his domain. And now, Jesus as his people, the new people of God in the world, the kingdom of God in the world and the greatest opponents are the powers of darkness who wants to destroy that because the kingdom of the world is supposed to be the kingdom of this of satan but god has claimed back his kingdom and we must not we must, we must, we must realize that's why we go when we march on a thursday yes hallelujah amen we have the same enemy yeah. and we're going to come together yeah. and we are marching because we are we're doing our prayer work because we're recognizing that this is about the kingdom of God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. hallelujah. Yeah. That's right. yeah. And Paul was saying that we must listen very keenly to what he's saying, that there are principalities and powers and rules of darkness trying to confuse what is the kingdom of God? And that we must be aware of whom we are fighting against. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Listen to this. Against rulers of darkness of this age. How many of you understand that in every age, in Paul's age, he understood there was Rule arche, rulers, hierarchies of powers with designation of authorities and powers in this world. He understood that. Mm -hmm. There was rulers of darkness trying to operate in 2021 in the era that we are living in to bring confusion, to bring all kinds of division. But when it comes to the people of God, 
we must look different from the world. Yeah. When it yeah. comes to the people of God, yeah. there must be something unique about it. Yeah. Something that is so uh, brilliant in that when, when people come to the church, it's not just like going to a society, societal meeting right. or going to a political rally right. or, or going to a, a, an activist meeting or a protest rally. When they come to the, the people yeah. of God, yeah. it's different. Yeah. There's something different about yeah. when it's in the church because yeah. the church is working on multiple multiple dimensions. We're working to glorify Jesus Christ. Why? Because we have one thing in common. We want to praise the Lordship of Jesus yes. and we want to move in the power yes. of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And let me tell you something. If there's ever been a time we need to understand, this is what we've been talking about, it. the power of the Holy Spirit is today. Yes. 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 Because it's one thing to have a corporate ecclesial embodying of Christ. But when you're on your own, you cannot meet, you better have Jesus inside you. You better be a walking, talking temple of the Holy Ghost. Right, Rick? You better be a walking, talking. You know, sometimes... We, we think that the Holy Ghost only moves, right, Pastor Charlotte, in the temple. Right. But you are a walking, talking, yes. power-packed yes. temple of God. That's right. Yes. The devil wants you to think that you are weak and feeble. Nope. But let me tell you what Jesus says. Jesus said you are more than a conqueror. Oh, yes. You are filled with the Spirit. Yes. Jesus said, I bless you to make a difference. Yes. You are endowed with all of the fullness of God. And he said, if you open your mouth and begin to proclaim, and God will download the powers of heaven into your home, into your bodies. Yeah. Yes. 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 Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. We just need to understand who we are. That's why... The, the apostle was saying, finding your identity in Christ, yes. Yes. in Jesus. Jesus. Who are you? Yes. Who are you? Yes. What have they named you? She's timid. She's nervous. She suffers from, he suffers from, from depression. He's a drug addict. He's an alcoholic. Let me tell you what Jesus says about you. You are more than a conqueror. Right. You've been raised up in Christ. God has lifted you up and given you power and anointing. Hallelujah to God. I need somebody who begin to declare not what friends have been saying about you, not what your mother's been saying about you, or everybody else, but begin to say what Jesus is saying about you. How many of you can begin to repeat what Jesus is saying about you? Come on, somebody. What is Jesus saying about you? Enthroned in our worship, enthroned.
enthroned in our worship. Hallelujah to God. Yes. When you come hallelujah. to church, people will cry out. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Cry out for the kind of revival we need in these days. Yes. These are not times for timid words. Right, right, right. These are times to roar like a lion. Amen. Yes. Against the, the forces coming against us. Yes. Trying to divide. The power of the Holy Spirit is among us today. Yes. And so we have to know whom we fight against. And lastly, we have to know how to stand. Yes. Know how to stand. When you stand, you're not naked. You know, God has not sent you into battle without any weapons to fight with. Right. He's not sent you into, into a, a war zone with your trim, swimming trunks and your swimming wear. You are fortified. Yes. Yes. You have all what you need. When you stand, stand with the helmet of salvation. Because yes. this is where the devil's going to attack you yes. in your head. Yes. Tell the devil, devil, I'm saved. I'm born again. Yes. And I'm washing the blood. Yes. He's going to tell you, you're not saved the way you behave. Salvation is based upon what Jesus has given. So don't beat yourself up and begin to give God praise that your salvation is not based upon what you do, but what Jesus has done on the cross. Why? That is your point to shout. That is your point to say, praise God. My salvation is not predicated upon what I've done, what I will do, but upon Jesus Christ. Have your helmet in place. I've never seen so many believers confused. Believe anymore, Pastor. Helmet of salvation. Uh, helmet of salvation. I'm safe. A mind has been changed. I'm safe. I'm Romans safe. chapter 12. I'm Hallelujah. Safe. I've been changed into the image of Christ. I know who I am. These are times Christians have to know who you are. Yes. And it's not Baptist or Methodist. I'm a Baptist, I'm a Catholic. No. mendacious words and lies. Stand upon the truth. You think the truth is going to change because situations change? No. How many of you know that God is still Jehovah Rapha? Yeah. He's still Jehovah Tariq. He's still Jehovah Tiskudu. No matter what you are facing through, going through, it does not change the truth of God's yeah. word. Yeah. be miles away from your experience. The only thing that you should doubt is your doubt. Right. Thank you. Right. I, some of you believe your doubts more than the truth. Okay. Doubt your doubts. Yes. Yes. And begin to say it does not look like it right now. Right. I can't see it right now. I don't feel it in my body which is sick right now. But I know that God is true. Hallelujah. You're gonna begin to profess something yeah. until it comes to pass. Yeah. You're gonna you're gonna have to get your confession yeah. in your, your life to align with your confession. Yeah. Sometimes what we are saying is not in line, but keep on saying it, it will come to pass. Keep on confessing it, keep on believing it, and you will find your reality. supernatural workings didn't, didn't really matter. So they conformed their theology to be cessationist. Right. That these things have passed away. 
They were full of hearers, but they didn't decide. It's easy to conform your truth according to the convenience of our time. Yes. But I'll tell you something, friends. God's words didn't change. Amen. His words are the same today. That's right. And even if it, when things look into you, you're in the face, and they say that's not the truth, believe God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Believe His word. Believe God's word. Yes. When people call me and say, Pastor, I don't want to do it. You know the first thing I do? I bring them back to the word. I say, read the word. yourself yes. with God's word. Yes. Everybody else is calling you to align themselves with their philosophy. Align themselves with their ideology. Align themselves with their own ideas. But I choose to align myself with God's infallible, immutable, unchangeable word. Yes. A word that lasted through our times. A word that would still go on after I've long gone. A word that kept Paul the apostle. A word who died for the faith, a word that came all of the great leaders of the world and the great leaders of the enlightenment and the great awakenings. The word of God Amen. is the same today. Yes. Yes. Jesus. So stand fast yes. in the truth. Don't bend your truth to meet your reality. Yes. That's right. Yes. Don't adjust your truth to meet your lack of faith. Don't give yourself a theological opt-out clause because God has put a footnote on that particular truth to accommodate your weakness. Woo! That was deep. We didn't catch it. Oh, I know that's a truth, but uh, God knows me. God knows my heart. God knows me. God has given me a special clause that I can do this because I need it. Even though it's sin and everything else. He knows that if I don't do it, I'm gonna. And I don't, it's not like before, I don't do it as much. He's a holy God. Stand on the truth. Stand on the truth. Even when the truth makes you feel uncomfortable. Because yes. if you look at the truth in the face, the truth is gonna look you back and say, eh, 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 eh. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The truth is gonna tell you what is true. Stand with your shield of faith. Yes. Hallelujah. I believe God. Yes. I believe God. Hallelujah. If I die, I want to be like the, the, the three Hebrew boys who said to those who are going to throw them in the fire. They said, you know, good gentlemen, we may not escape the fire, but I want to testify now before I go into the fire just because, in case I don't come out. Right. And I want to let you know that the truth is irrespectful of, irrespective of my experience, the truth is that our God is able. Hallelujah. I don't care what my experience is, but it doesn't change the truth of God. I thought God promised me this, and, God, and maybe God didn't, it wasn't the truth. Yes, it was the truth. The truth is bigger than you. Yeah. It's bigger than your experience. Yeah. It's bigger than Job. Yeah. Yes. God's word is true. Yes. And we must stand with the shield of faith. Let me tell you this. You know why? The, the arrowy darts of the enemies are coming. Yes. Are you, have you not been feeling them? Yes. One by one, your children, bam. Allow me to have mine. Amen. Right. I believe 
that the broad way leads to destruction. I believe the gospel that we have to, we have to not just have a vague universalist understanding of Christianity that is an and that is an, a destruction for our time. An anathema. But we must believe that the only and I, I'm just a gospel person. All you're going to get from me is gospel. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. There are other people with other things, but all I know is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that Jesus Christ keeps. If you want to hear from me, I'm going to just tell you the same scratch record. Jesus keeps, he's saved, he's sanctifies. He's filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. And no matter how your life has been a mess, if you put your hands into the hand of Jesus, he will change it around and turn it beautiful. Yes. Yeah. I don't know about Muhammad and Confucius and Guru Nanak and Guru Guru Bin Singh, but I can tell you, Jesus Christ Amen. the gospel. Jesus keeps. Come on, believers. Get hold of the gospel wherever you go. Go as a Christian evangelist proclaiming the truth of God's word. Amen. Amen. In closing, hallelujah. Get that table ready for me. Oh my, the time is gone. I'm getting excited. Okay. I'm trying to keep my messages down to 15 minutes. They told me that's what I should do, but I'm getting there. It's okay. Hey! children. 